Hey everyone. So in a previous video on Azure ML Service, I showed how you can use Python in an Azure ML Service notebook to use AutoML. But in this video, I'm gonna show how you can use AutoML within the Azure ML Service UI. Before we do that, one thing you do need to have is that your workspace edition needs to be in enterprise mode instead of standard. And going to the Azure ML Service page here, an automated ML, if it's not enterprise mode, you'll have a padlock on it. So if we go here and just click on new automated ML run, we can use some other data sets that we have in our data store, but we can create a new data set here. And I'm going to use that, this bank customer data set and create a new data store, say bank customer, tied to my Azure subscription, put it to my data, blob container and good I have my account key I just got that from the Azure storage Explorer I'm gonna browse for this data set here now use this bank CSV file and go click next and just call bank customer will change the data store name and you click data store or create data store here we go and click next and go. So I noticed the delimiter was a semicolon, but the column headers use it from the first line here. There we go. So we've got our headers. I don't need to skip any rows. So I'll click next and we have a schema here. So there's any columns that we know we don't want, such as my database ID columns or anything like that. We can just don't include them here, but I'll just include everything else and click next and confirm and create our data store. All right, so we have a data store here. So I'll just click that and click next for our auto ML run. Create an experiment name. I just do bank marketing target column. This is gonna be default if the customer defaulted on their loan or not. And I'm gonna create a new compute for this. So auto ML compute, I'll continue with the CPU. And I'll do the standard of four cores and all that. I'll keep minimum number of nodes to zero, maximum to six, idle before scale down. I'll keep that as the default. And we don't need any virtual machine settings. So I'll just click create. All right, so a compute cluster was created. I'll click next, create a new, it's like I reset my settings from before, bank marketing. So I noticed that it would be a classification task type here. You can enable deep learning. It's not exactly the neural network deep learning. This is the health featureized text data that you have for higher accurate for higher accuracy. I'll leave this disabled for now. I can add additional settings here. I'm gonna change my primary metric to AUC since it is a classification problem here. Exit criteria, default is three hours. I'm gonna run this for 30 minutes and I'll save that. Click finish. And it's gonna create a new auto ML run for me and start the run. All right, so the run started and with the magic of video editing, I can time travel to when this is finished. All right, so this run got completed and we see uh, the algorithm for the best model was a voting ensemble. They had an AUC of 88%, which is not too bad. And we can dig deep into here and we can go to the data guardrails. Pretty much just a sequence of checks on the input data to ensure high quality. You see here, the first one, the data has been split to validation data set. If we look here, we have an alert, our class balancing detection found that imbalanced classes were detected and we can look at some more details the label of yes that the loan was defaulted was the smallest class so 76 out of 45 21 had this label and it found no missing features and no high cardinality look at the models here here's the one that it chose we can look at the explanation on it which i think is a really cool feature that we have here. You see the highest, oh well, 60% importance on the model was what balance that they currently had in the 
in the bank at the time. A lot less is the marital status than if they get a loan and then so on. It has a high accuracy, but we expected that with an imbalanced data set in the 88% of the AUC. So that's kind of a quick rundown on using the AutoML UI within the Azure ML service. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.